and glorious morning to you. I welcome you to Oasis Christian Assembly Sunday morning service and I am excited today because it's a special Sunday. Hallelujah. A very special Sunday and we know that God desires you to triumph, desires you to win at all times and therefore get ready today to be equipped to know how to obtain your victory at all times. Hallelujah. Victory belongs to you. Yes, it does. Regardless of what has happened in the week before, in the days before, I want you to know today is a special service and you are so welcome. As you know, there is grace for you to cause you to win always. Shall we lift up our hands as we begin to pray? Open your heart right now. Let the Spirit of God have free course with you. Let the expression of your love and appreciation to God be felt by God Himself. So stand up on your feet as we get ready to pray with the understanding that it is God who desires you to win all the time. He is the great I am. He has made you more than a conqueror. Shall we lift up our hands this morning? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. We thank you for your presence here now. Your presence in every home. We thank you, Father, for your power that is present to heal. We thank you for your grace and your mercies that are new upon this day. We thank you that it is you who is at work both to will and to do according to your good pleasure. And this morning we say, Lord, have your way in the hearts of every man, in the hearts of every woman, in the hearts of every child. Have your way in that home. We exalt you and proclaim your lordship in all creation and proclaim your sovereignty in all the earth. We declare you are mighty. We declare you are majesty. We declare that you are holy. We declare you are faithful. We declare you are alpha and omega. We declare you are the great and mighty God. We declare you are the most high God. You are the God who never changes. You are the same yesterday today, today, and forevermore. You are Jehovah, the all-sufficient one, the mighty-breasted one, and to you belongs all praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. We want to go straight into a time of prayer. Hallelujah. And we will go praying using Psalm 57. And we are using it in prayer, making affirmations of what 
the Bible instructs us to do. It says, be merciful and gracious to me, O God. Be merciful and gracious to me, for my soul takes refuge and finds shelter and confidence in you. Yes, in the shadow of your wings will I take refuge and be confident until calamities and destructive storms are past. Hallelujah. Remember today there's a special word about your victory. There's a special word about your triumph. And in this scripture, you are declaring that, Lord, I take refuge in you. Lord, I find shelter in you. I find my confidence in you. Yes, I do. Abide in the shadow of your wings. Hallelujah. Go ahead and use the scripture. We'll keep the scripture on the screen so that you use it to affirm who God is to you. Go basa tara bare de bere ke shara bandoro ro kozada. Haya sabandoro ro bo shindele baki basoya. Haya sara bandoro ro kushi bandoro kozada. Haya sareta. Haya rebeki da barondo sabara ke di bakaya. Huye rebeki nde sebe ke seba kabade iga asa. Huye shebere konde si bandara bakabigiya. Huye sembere ki andosa. Haya shebere ki barobosa. Haya rebado bo sumbe. Haya seria kuye tara ba. Huye rebere shabara basado. Huye sembere Father, you are our refuge. We find our shelter in you. Mandaraba, we abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Mandaraba, Sada, Hoya Bedega, Hoya Rebashindo, Hoya Zabere Karabasa, Hoya Zabere Kito Moroko Samba, Hayerebe Dima Sarabandega Zibagaba, Hare Shabere Kora Sindaraba Sade. We thank you, Lord, that you are our shelter. And we know we find our refuge in you until the calamities have passed. We know that there's an utter end of the works of the evil one. We know that you lead us in triumph every single day. Victory belongs to us. Victory belongs to your children. Victory belongs to all the saints. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Glory to God. We want to continue praying. And we're going to use the scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, knowing that victory belongs to you. Yes, it does. It doesn't matter what has happened. Victory time. Victory time. Hallelujah. It says, but thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory. And through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. Shall we take the first part of the scripture again? It says, but no matter what you are going through, no matter what you have experienced, hallelujah, thanks be unto God. We are going to thank God this morning for He always leads you and I and all of us in triumph. You are going to thank the Lord that in this month, in the month to come, until the end of the year, until rapture comes, you are led in triumph. You are led in victory. And through you, the gospel is spreading. Amen. Go ahead and thank the Lord. There's victory for you. Victory belongs to you. Sabara bade baso yo kodobosa haye shebere karubosa haye rabare tabara baso de bekisata huye shebere ngisiba haye sibika huye sebeye kibatara bonde re basimbere shediba huye re bas haye re badeka haye re beke beke ose beke diba ganda robo shinda haye re beki abaso huye sebere kata bara boshamba haye sebere bonde sibeke bianga daba kabia siada huye re bende kabia kieda huye re besha thank you Lord that you're leading every one of us in trust. You are leading every child of God in triumph. You are leading us in victory. We are having a victory parade. We are strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. And a Man, hallelujah. Just lift up your hands and declare with me right now. I am led in victory. I am led in triumph. I see my victory. I see my success. I see opportunities. I see my promotion. I see 
my elevation. I see I am mounting higher and higher like an edifice. I am soaring like an eagle. I see there is victory for me. In this situation, there is victory for me. In the name of Jesus, I am led in a moment of triumph every day. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are led in triumph. You are led in victory. Victory belongs to you because Jesus won it all for you. Jesus gave it all for you. Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, did it all for us. Hallelujah. He's the reason why we're here today. He's the reason why we are celebrating today. He's the reason why today is a special day because Jesus conquered the devil and made a public spectacle of him gloriously triumphing over him so that you and I and all of us, hallelujah, could triumph every single day. Oh, I'm so excited. Glory to God. And at this moment, we are going to read our Rhapsody, our daily devotional. It is beautiful. And you will see why I'm calling it beautiful. Take your seats as we get ready to read. Hallelujah. And it talks about trust like a child. Let's read together. Participate with us and receive the word as it comes to you. Hallelujah. And the scripture reading is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Blessed be his name forever. Let's continue reading. Being trusting isn't the same as being gullible. And recognizing this distinction is essential because there are gullible people who think they are trusting. To be gullible means to be easily deceived. But children aren't really or easily deceived. They are usually trusting. Wow. Glory to God. Let's continue reading. It's so beautiful. They trust your character. Adults, however, can be gullible and adults will try to reason out whatever he's told before he trusts it and he may not give much concern to the character of the one he's trusting powerful wisdom out there right now let's continue reading if you hold out a child from the balcony for example, and ask someone else whom the child trusts to stay at the ground floor and catch him, the child will be ready to let go because he trusts the one at the ground floor. How so true? Let's continue reading. The child may not know if the fellow downstairs has the power or the ability to catch him. But he believes, hallelujah, he wouldn't let him fall. That's the kind of childlike faith you are to have towards God. Yes, hallelujah. Let's continue reading. The Lord Jesus admonished in Matthew 18 verse 3, amplified classic. It says that we be like little children, trusting, lowly, loving, forgiving. He wants you to trust the character of God. Yes, I'll say that again. He wants you to trust the character of God. His character is made plain in the word. He never fails. Oh, hallelujah. Boldly place your confidence in Him to fulfill His purpose in your life. Glory to God. Let's continue. Hallelujah. Mazato. Sometimes when you try to help God mm, out in doing what 
he intends, perhaps he's given you a vision or ministered some ideas to you relating to your purpose. And you are so excited and eager to see everything work out, which is good. But if you are not trusting and yielded to the Holy Spirit, you may try to play God. You may be playing His role by trying to help Him in your own wisdom. Mm. But the end result won't be pleasant. Think about that. Don't try to help God. Let's continue. Hallelujah. The best of all is to trust that He alone knows and has the blueprint for your life. Take a cue from Abraham who trusted and followed the Lord even though he didn't know where God was leading him. The Bible says by faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. So powerful, so inspiring, and so encouraging. Hallelujah. To put our trust in the character of God who never fails. Shall we stand to your feet, please? And let's say the prayer together and let it come from your heart. Let it come from deep within because faith is expressed through you right now. Dear Father, I live my life trusting you wholeheartedly in all things, leaning on your word and acting on your instructions. I commit my plans, aspirations, and desires to you being fully convinced that you are more interested in my passion and passionate for my success than I could ever be in Jesus name Amen. Speak in tongues as you're expressing your faith to God. Do do go see kitara barango sundara bagarita rade bandoro bo shendere bagi bandoro kosi bandara kadegezaya are bakubende si begeze bekaba huye re begende si begeze bakabande kia satere bashada huye re bende sabaya zagai. In Jesus' precious name, Father, we thank you. Amen and amen. Can you shout glory? I didn't hear you shout glory, glory, hallelujah. You are trusting in God. Yes, you are. And at this moment, glory to God. It's time we celebrate Jesus. We honor him. We magnify his name. We praise him. We worship him. We proclaim his greatness. Hallelujah. We shout his name. It's that time where you express your love to him. It's that time where you show your gratitude to Him. Do you know the one who worships always gets heaven to respond to Him? May you dance today such that God thinks, Wow, look at my son. Look at my daughter, the way she's dancing and singing for me. Will you do that today? Yes. It's the month of wisdom. And wisdom has come to you now on how to worship, how to praise God. From deep within, out of the abundance of your heart, the heart of praise, the heart of worship. As we declare, He's an awesome God. He is an awesome God. Just begin to declare, Lord, you are an awesome God. Yes, you are mighty. You are Jehovah. You are the all-sufficient one. You are the great I am. You are an awesome God. There's no one that can compare to you. There's no one that ever matched your kindness. Awesome God. Let's welcome Saint Chichi as she leads us in a time of praise and worship. Glory to God. Stay on your feet and get ready to dance for God. Amen. Awesome. 
awesome God. He is an awesome God. Yes, I want to shout it out. He's an awesome God. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Maro do seto riba darambi shiando radeba soboro gozenda hayereba bobosha. You are an awesome God. You are a worthy God of praise. Kaya rabandora bobashinde reba zadegasa. We thank you, Father, and give you all the praise and give you all the honor because you are an awesome God. Amen. Woo! I enjoyed that. And I trust that my Father in heaven enjoyed your worship too. Glory to God. And we want to worship God this time, not only with our voices, not only with our dance, but we want to worship Him with that which He has given us, with our substance. Yes, the Lord has given you something to worship Him with. He has given you a job. He has given you talents. He has given you abilities. He has given you life. So this is the time to give him praise and thanksgiving. And let's go into the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 7 to 8. And see what the Bible says about giving to the Lord. Amen. It says, let each one, that means you, hallelujah. Yes, you my brother. Yes, you my sister. Hallelujah. It says, let each one give as he has made up his own mind, purposed in his heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves. He takes pleasure in. Prizes above other things. 
and is unwilling to abandon, to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it, giver whose heart is in his giving. Glory to God. This is a powerful scripture. Listen to it. It says, let each one. That means you sitting there, you sitting there, you sitting there. What should you do? It says, let each one give as you have made up your own mind. That means before you came to service today, you were thinking, what shall I give God today? That's what God is teaching us. You're thinking there, what do I render my Jehovah? What do I give my Father? What do I give my Lord? What do I give my Master? What do I give the one who has made me King? What do I give the one who is my shield? What do I give the one who is my salvation? What do I give the one who is ever present in my time of need? He says, let each one who has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart. You know, there's some people who, when it's offering time, they're now counting coins in their pockets. No, that means you didn't purpose in your heart to give God. God wants you to purpose in your heart what to give Him. So I'm giving you time right now to purpose in your heart what to give God. Your tithe, your offerings, your first fruits, your thanksgiving offerings. What do you purpose in your heart? What do you purpose to give Him today? Right now, He says He cannot do without somebody like you who purposes to give. He says He is not willing to abandon the one who's a prompt to do it giver. That means no matter what, God will always support you. Think about it. You will never lack anything because you are quick to respond to God's word in giving. Hallelujah. And let's go to verse 8 quickly as we see what else God says. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance. Hallelujah. Think about it. He didn't say some. He didn't say, I'll give you a portion. He said, God is able to make all grace, every favor, whatever kind of favor you are thinking of, there's more from God. And earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support And furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Wow. This is you when you give to the Lord. Everything in abundance. Will you do the word of God right now? Yes, do the word. And see the results that the scriptures are talking about. You will be testifying every day when you do what God is telling you to do right now. Shall we lift up our hands as we pray? And remember, purpose in your heart right now. Mazo koto shinda. Digi zo koro kosianda rabakabedo gunda kisa debashiada. Father, I thank you. For this word is so pure, so divine, so instructive to us. I pray and thank you that as we have purpose in our hearts to give you, you make all grace, every earthly blessing abound towards us. In increasing measure. Thank you for my brother, my sister who is responding to this word. And giving unto you. Because you watch over your word to perform it. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. Be blessed as you give. Our bank account details are now showing on the screen. You can go ahead and do an EFT. Or scan and go to our payment portal. Where it is saved to give to the Lord. Hallelujah. Be blessed in your giving. As we welcome back Sister Chichi to lead us in a beautiful song. Hallelujah. That he is a holy God. Glory to God. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. My God, you are holy.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are a holy God. And only you, Lord, deserve the best. We present all the offerings, all the tithes, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And we declare, as your word has said, that there is an overflow in everyone's life. There is an abundance in everyone's life. And I thank you and we declare that these resources are multiplied and will be used for the furtherance of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for their coming back with a testimony of your goodness. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Glory to God. You know, even victory belongs to you in your resources. Victory belongs to you in your health. Victory belongs to you in your family. Victory belongs to you in your job. Victory belongs to you in your job. Hallelujah. Are you ready to hear the word of God? Are you ready to receive the word of God that's living, that is active, that is sharper than any two-edged sword? Are you ready to receive the word of God? Take it in strong. Let it be that which you partake of right now. Bring change in your life. Bring the winning grace in your life. It's a special Sunday. And yes, God is mindful of you. If you have opened up your heart and you are saying, Lord, I'm ready. There's an outpouring of his blessings for you today. There's an outpouring of his love for you today. There's an outpouring of his supernatural power in your life today to cause you to triumph, to cause you to win. Lift up your hands and begin to pray. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Take everything that the Lord has prepared for you today. Continue praying as we welcome our man of God, Pastor Andrew, to teach us and give us the word for the now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Doro godo senda. Radeba doro gozendere ba shatara baba baba so. Oh ya bazaba kabiesi endoro shatara We declare that the word of God has free course and it is glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Heaven Father, we thank you for this great day. Dear Father, we thank you for your words building us up. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us. 
We thank you that our hearts and minds are opened, ready to hear the word, ready to welcome the word, ready to understand the word, ready to do the word without delay, knowing fully well that you're more interested in our success than it would ever be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. It is good to have you joining us today in this live uh, online Sunday service broadcast. Welcome. You're going to have a wonderful time. And uh, just pay attention and be blessed as go along. Do not be distracted. Focus. Hallelujah. Don't allow any distractions. And even now, send the links to your friends, to your relatives, to your enemies. Invite them to join you and they'll be blessed as well. And enjoy yourself as we get ready to hear what the Lord has prepared for us for today. Hallelujah. We've been sharing in this series, Facing Danger. We've, we saw from very clearly that you will face danger in life. You face dangers in life and go through many interesting aspects. And today is a particularly significant day because this is our first Sunday for us here in South Africa. This is our first Sunday since the government increased, the, the loosened the limitations of the lockdowns to level one. And... In churches, we're no longer limited by the, by the count of 50 people only in the sanctuary. They've been relaxed. We are able to go to a maximum of 250 um, people in the sanctuary or, or maximum of 50% capacity of the sanctuary, but not exceeding 250. We thank God for that progress. But we want complete loosening. We continue to pray that we, you know, we, you know, we move forward and these limitations are completely removed and uh, we're able to advance, you know, we're able to advance. And we thank God for this progress. We're moving forward, hallelujah. But also understand, to, since a very special day as well, I want to understand that today, as I'm preaching and teaching to you today, victory belongs to you. Let it be your mindset that victory belongs to you, hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you face, victory belongs to you. And some of you are facing challenges on many fronts, many dangers on many fronts. I declare unto you, victories belong to you. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue. You're going to see for yourself. But have the mentality, victory belongs to you. Victories belong to you. They are yours in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm just going to pick up some few things uh, that from when we left last week. Just start off by reading uh, Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10. Uh, our, from chapter 6 from verse 10. I read it from the Amplified Bible, it's written. And remember, this is Apostle Paul writing to the Ephesian church. These were successful Christians. And Apostle Paul is writing to them and says, to already successful Christians who have been able to stand against persecutions. Okay, you've been able to stand when they've been facing opposition because they have believed in Jesus Christ and they've had tremendous success. So Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10, Apostle Paul writes, says, In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. Hallelujah. Next verse, verse 11, 6 verse 11. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Verse 12. For we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits, who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Now, that's the verse, verse 12 we focused a lot on uh, last week, Sunday, and the other previous verses, previous verses, even six verses, uh, 10 to 11, we focus them in the earlier days of this series. And I would encourage you to visit our, our, our YouTube channels, the TV channel, megaswell.tv on YouTube, as well as Pastor Endum Dundo channel on YouTube, so they can catch up with the previous episodes in this series, Facing Danger. And um, so today, this is part six in this series, Facing Danger. And have the consciousness that victory belongs to you. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to start off by just a very brief summary of some of the things that we covered last week. Uh, first, we understand when we pick up. So I'm not going to just give a very brief summary that uh, you can understand that, 
you know, uh, there are seven levels that we looked at um, of demonic, which are proofs of demonic activity in your life. You know, because you see, many people when they face danger, they f do not emerge victorious because they've allowed demonic activity in their lives. So we, I'm just going to list, we cover them in great, tremendous detail uh, uh, last week, Sunday. And I still encourage you, there's that series I spoke to you about called Victory Over Demons. It's a four-part audio series that I, teach, that I preached a few years ago. And uh, it's called Victory Over Demons. Audio, part one, part four, is available for you on the megasworldstore.com, our online store, and the link is on your screens right now. So... Let me give you those seven levels that indicate that there's demonic activity in your life. You are being influenced by demonic activity. Level number one, regression. Regression. When you, regression, very briefly, you go back to your old habits. You go back to your old habits, like missing church. So regression, number one, you go back to your old bad habits. Number two, uh, repression. Hallelujah. Repression. In repression, you murmur. You complain a lot. You are emotional. You are moody. Saint says the moodiness is an indication of demonic influence in a person's life. You got the people that are high and low alternatives. Moodiness is an indication of demonic uh, activity in your life, demonic influence in your life. So be careful. That's number. That's number two. You see. Um, so that that's repression, right? Number three. Uh, that shows that the, the third level. So I'm giving you levels. Remember the level one was. Um, Regression, going back to old habits. Level two, which shows an increased uh, you know, influence of demonic activity in your life, is what? Is, um, is uh, regression. Okay? Then level three, which shows an even greater level of demonic activity in your life, is suppression. All right? We, uh, when you say suppression, suppression, you don't testify about your salvation. You don't testify about what God is doing in your life. You don't testify about God's goodness. Even though there's many things that God is doing in your life, you just don't want to testify. That's a higher level of demonic influence. So that's suppression, level three. Level four is depression. Level four is what? Depression. Now, true biblical depression is absolute hopelessness. Okay? Absolute hopelessness. And there's complete hopelessness. And um, that's level four. Now, these four levels I've given you, um, regression, repression, suppression, and depression. In these four levels, you can easily, or you can correct a person in those four levels by showing them scriptures or rebuking them. If they are in those four levels, they will take that correction and they will change. All right? You show them the scriptures, they will change. Now, level five is oppression. Now, in level five oppression, the demon enters, right? This is, that's different. The big difference between being just influenced. The demon enters in level five, that is oppression, okay? Um, in oppression, there is no correction that will manifest with scripture. <laughs> in oppression, you have to cast out the demon, hallelujah. You see, levels one to four, which I showed you earlier, where you can quote the scripture, it's like you are in a partnership with demons, all right? You're in a partnership with demons, all right? Level five, oppression. I mean, you are in oppression of demons, all right? The demon is inside you. And, um, and someone else said to me, Pastor, how do you see that a demon is in a person? Don't worry. When you look in the eyes, you'll be able to see there's a demon in there. Someone will say, how will you know? When you get there, you will know. <laughs> how? By the Holy Spirit. So that is uh, oppression. That's level five, okay? You see, you cannot treat a demon. You see, there are things that you can treat, but if something is driven by a demon, like I was told earlier on, where the demon is inside, you cannot treat it. It needs to be cast out. Okay? Uh, then level six is what's called uh, obsession. Okay? In, uh, in obsession, you are besieged by demons. You carry an atmos a demonic atmosphere wherever you go. You know, there's some people you can see that they are besieged by demons. If you put on a cologne or a good perfume or deal, you know, you carry an atmosphere that will be, the people can smell it, it's nice. Well, someone who is in demonic obsession, okay, carries a demonic atmosphere. They are besieged by demons, and you can actually see it. <laughs> you see, you can see it. 
See, the Holy Spirit makes you see it. You see, they are besieged by demons. They carry the demonic atmosphere. Then level seven is uh, what's called possession. Okay, possession. That is complete, total takeover of spirit, soul, and body. So demonic possession is complete takeover of your spirit, soul, and body. You see, in demonic possession, there is nothing that you can do on your own. The demons completely control you. They've taken over your spirit. They've taken over your soul. They've taken over your body. That's demonic possession. Now, you've got to understand that in those three, demonic uh, oppression, which is level five, demonic uh, obsession, level six, and demonic uh, possession, level seven, all right? You cannot treat that. Which means you have to cast out the demon or demons. You have to cast out in Jesus' name. Very important. The beautiful part is that someone got born again today. In Christ, you have enough ability to cast out every demon. <laughs> so understand that. So that's very e e important. Now, understand in, if you are born again, a born again person cannot be possessed by demons. All right? If you are born again, you cannot be possessed by demons. All right? You need to understand that. But if you are not born again, you can be possessed by demons. Spirit, soul, and body controlled by demons. All right? So... That is a brief of those seven uh, levels of demonic activity we kind of lost. So, go to understand that if you're seeing any of them in your life altogether, level one to four, you said the scriptures, you corrected, you know, wonderful. Level five to seven, you have to cast out the demon. You see, you have to cast out the demon. You cannot counsel a demon. <laughs> so, going through that, you cannot counsel a demon, you got to cast out. Now, we also looked at, um, we also looked at uh, uh, some of the things that open, which if you do, you open doors for demons to come and influence in your life and even to enter and even eventually take possession of you if you're not born again. See, what are those things? I'm just going to give them to you uh, just for a line of one of them, which is one of the, the first one I'll give, which is probably the major one, but the one is that rebellion. Rebellion is the first step. Rebellion against especially spiritual authorities. Rebellion against pastoral authority is the first step towards opening yourself up to demonic uh, influence. All right? N number two, abuse of your tongue. Abuse of your tongue opens you to satanic and demonic activity. Um, to, um, so you attract demons into your life. Number three, a critical spirit. A critical spirit. I gave this to you. Number four, fear. Number four, fear. Fear invites demons into your life. Number five, unforgiveness. Five, unforgiveness. Um, number six, uh, involvement in demonic activity. Participating in demonic activity. You know, like uh, involved with spirit mediums, involved with uh, fortune tellers, involved with tarot leaders, palm reading, uh, involvement with, uh, with uh, horoscopes, you know, the stars. That's demonic activity. So in, in the Bible is very clear, and uh, it's quite important. Uh, I didn't share this scripture with you the last week, but let me just share it with you under involvement with demonic activity. Let's just read it. Uh, it's called let's read Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Leviticus 19, verse 31. Let's read it from the King James Bible. Leviticus 19, Verse 31. Hallelujah. It's written. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Let's look at that verse again in the King James, in the Unfair Bible. Look, Leviticus 19, verse 31. It says, Turn not those mediums who have familiar spirits or to wizards. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord, your God. So do not participate in demonic activity. And see the same verse, Leviticus 19, 31, in the Amplified, sorry, in the Message Bible. Leviticus 19, verse 31, in the Message Bible. Don't dabble in the occult or traffic with mediums. You pollute your souls. I am the Lord, your God. So don't participate in it. Hallelujah. And then number seven, open yourself to demonic activity. Spirit of jealousy, spirit of jealousy. It said that's a strong man, spirit of jealousy. And uh, under spirit of jealousy, that's the strong man. You see, the manifestations uh, that show that person is under spirit of jealousy. You open, when you're jealous, you open some demonic activity, and it's often 
manifests in uh, anger, rage, you know, terrible. Re you want revenge, you know. So and I also gave you number eight. I said uh, number eight that opens yourself to demonic activity that attracts demons is a lying spirit, a lying spirit, a lying spirit. And I just give you some few extra ones. We don't have time. If you get that message entitled Victory Over Demons, part one, two, three, and four. It's an audio series. We teach them in great detail. You'll be mightily blessed. I'll remind you again, go to Megasword, online store, megasword.com. The link is on your screens, and you indeed might be blessed. Get the entire series. It will bless you mightily. All right? And uh, I think the others, I'll just give them to you. you can, number nine is familiar spirits. Say familiar spirits. Um, uh, you know, I mean, there's, then there's also spirit of divination. I, I can continue. There's many others. I won't go into it. You go and get the series, and you learn more about it. But understand that when you face danger, if you don't deal, if you don't make sure that you, uh, you stop demonic influence in your life, you end up in failure. And indeed, don't open yourself. Don't attract demons. This is a warning. Because some people don't come out of danger because they are always attracting demons. Attracting demons. Hell. So with that background, let's switch to that. Let's go straight from Ephesians 7, 6, verse 12, which we read earlier. Let's go to verse 13. Ephesians 7, 6, verse 13. Remember, victory belongs to you. And we'll cover the ground. Victory belongs to you. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Reading you from the Amphi Bible. Apostle Paul continues to tell the Christians at Ephesus. The of Christians tells them, Therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist. <laughs> that you may be able to, what? to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands, to stand firmly in your place. You see, look at the scripture. He's telling the people, Christians, he says, hang on. Put on God's whole armor that you may be able to resist. See, you need to be able to, to resist, to refuse to agree with Satan in this cause. You resist, you refuse to agree with satanic agenda. You stand your ground. You refuse to be swayed by Satan. You refuse to be deceived. And when you know that, hang on, this is wrong, you refuse, you resist. Stand your ground on the evil day of danger. Notice here, this Bible says, on the evil day of danger. Make it clear, you are going to face an evil day of danger. And in some cases, you face many evil days of danger. There is no testimony without a test. Christians, you need to understand this. So Paul is telling this as a Christian, hang on, you must resist. When you see the machines of Satan, resist. Don't come in agreement with Satan's agenda. Satan uses people. Satan uses government. Satan uses all sorts of things. <laughs> Don't agree with satanic agenda. So Paul says, in the evil day, don't agree with satanic agenda. Very important principle. Stand your ground. Victory belongs to you if you don't agree with satanic agenda. Victory belongs to you if you stand your ground. Bring up the verse again. See, Stand your ground on the evil day of danger. And having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. Powerful. Having done all the crisis demands to stand firmly in your place. <laughs> it doesn't matter what crisis you're facing. Some people are facing many crises on many fronts. But Paul says, hang on, you must be able to stand. And guess what? Having done everything that the crisis demands, everything that the challenge demands, every set, whatever it is said is, is keep against you, whatever danger has come your way, whatever crisis became by, by that danger, hang on, you'll be able to stand firmly in your place. Victory belongs to you if you stand firmly in your place. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Verse 40, Paul says, Stand therefore, hold your ground. We know we covered this, the Greek word translated stand here in Ephesians 6, verse 14. Is that Greek word he covered earlier? He stay me. In the earlier verse, Ephesians 6, verse 13, it's also the same verse translated word. He stay me. Stand. I taught you in great detail in uh, Face Danger Part 3 and 4. You can go and catch up on those ones. Hallelujah. 
We don't have time to go through that. But hang on, he's telling us verse 4. It says, stand, he's telling me. Therefore, bring up again Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth. Hallelujah. This is interesting. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. Just give me this verse, Ephesians 6 verse 14. Give it to me in the King James Bible so you can see because you're more familiar with that, with this verse in the King James. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, notice it. Have, so stand there, having your loins get about with what? With truth. And having on the breastplate of what? Righteousness. So for you to be able to stand, you must have what? The, your loins get about with what? With truth. What is truth? <laughs> what is truth? Well, in Ephesians 6 verse 14, the Greek word translated truth is aletheia. I'll spell it to you for you. A-L-E-T-H-E. I A, Aletia. So Paul is telling us this. He's saying, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Stand there for having your loins get about with what? With truth, with Aletia. What is that? Well, let's go to John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Hallelujah. In King James as well. John 17, 17. S Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Joseph said, sanctify them, separate them. Sanctify means to separate. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Let's have John 17, 17 in the Amplified Bible. Sanctify them, purify them, consecrate them, separate them for yourself. Make them holy. How? By the truth. By the truth. Your word is truth. So in John 17, 17, the Greek word translated truth, guess what it is? Aletheia as well. The one I mentioned to you earlier on. The same one translated uh, truth in Ephesians 6, verse 14. So we see from John 17, 17, what is truth? Truth is God's word. You see, God's word is truth. So if you go back to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14, let's read it again. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14 from the King James. What is Paul telling us? He's telling the Ephesians here, Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 14. Hallelujah. Stand therefore, having your loins get about with what? With truth. With what? With the word of God. With the word. <laughs> with the word. Very important. See, with the word. So you see, you have to stand with the word. Which word? The word of God. So in that crisis, in that challenge, stand on the side of the word of God. Ask yourself in this situation, what does God's word say? Side with what agrees with God's word. And many a time, what agrees with God's word uh, is the minority side. The majority does not mean that they are right. Quite often, the minority is right. Ask yourself, what does God's word say? So it's the different cases. Hang on. Stand therefore. <laughs> Stand therefore. With the truth, with the word of God, what does the word of God say? This crisis, this crisis, what does God's word say about this type of crisis? This crisis, what does it demand? What does God's word say you should do about this type of crisis? God's word will show you, will give you answers in every crisis. So bring up again Ephesians 6, verse 14. He's telling me, when you're facing danger, stand with what? The truth is, stand with the word of God. And it says, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. All right? The breastplate of righteousness. Well, having on. He said to them, have the consciousness. All right? You need truth, right? And having on. When you say having on, it says, hang on. Have the breastplate of righteousness. The fact that it's breastplate, it means you wait in, in the wars during those days. When the soldiers in those days wore breast, they would wear bracelets. This was armor, often steel, that would protect their chest, breastplate, protect their heart and the organs that are there, all right? That was in those days. So Paul said to them, hang on, 
you need to protect yourself with what? With the breastplate of righteousness. Not the breastplate of steel. Not the breastplate of soldiers' physical armor. But the breastplate of righteousness. He's saying, have the consciousness of what righteousness is. Go to Romans 5, verse 17. Romans 5, verse 17. Hallelujah. Let's read Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Bible says, For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the what? And the free gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, God, reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Let's look at that verse again. Romans 5, verse 17. Let's look at it again in the King James Bible. For if a one man's offense, death reigned by one, that's through Adam, all right? Much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. The day you got born again, all right? You received the gift of righteousness. The Holy Spirit came to live in you. The love of God was shed abroad in your heart. But in that instant as well, you received the gift of righteousness. Notice, it's a gift of righteousness. You received the day God born again. Righteousness is the nature of God. Righteousness gives God the ability to be right first time, every time, all the time. Righteousness gives you the life of God. <laughs> so, what is he telling us? Paul says, hang on. You must have the consciousness when you're in the day of evil, when you face danger. You must have the consciousness that you've got the breastplate of righteousness. When he says, put it on, have that consciousness that I have the life of God in me. <laughs> when you got born again, you got eternal life. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, you know, remember that scripture, John 3, verse 16. King Jesus, everyone knows it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. What's eternal life? The God kind of life. So when you've got the breastplate of righteousness, have the consciousness that you have the life of God in you, you have the nature of God in you, have that consciousness. See, if you don't have that consciousness, then you're going to fail to face the danger victoriously. In the evil day, it doesn't matter how challenging it is, says, I have the life of God in me. Maybe you, you are sick. And I said, you is terminal. Say, so there's no hope. You say, I have the life of God in me. The disease destroying life of God. Eternal life. The gift of righteousness, you have it. And let's look at John 3, verse 16 in the Amplified Bible. Let's, see. let's look at it right now. John 3, verse 16. In the Amplified Bible. It says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world, that he even gave up his only begotten unique son, that's reference to Jesus, so that whoever believes in, trusts in, clings to, relies on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal everlasting life. Question is, are you born again? If you are, yes, you have eternal life. The life of God is in you. Which life? The life makes sure you shall not perish. You shall not come to destruction. You shall not be lost. So if you go back to Ephesians 6, verse 14, you see, um, we read it uh, again, Ephesians 6, verse 14, uh, read it in the King James Bible. What does Paul say? Paul says, hang on, this is in, um, in the King James Bible. Paul says, stand therefore, having your loins get about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Be conscious of your, na of your, your nature. You have the nature of righteousness. Hallelujah. You cannot become more righteous than the day you got born again. <laughs> you don't increase in righteousness. The Holy Spirit came to live in you, they got born again. From that very moment, you're born again, you're a new creation. Righteousness is your nature. In our Christian development program, CDP, which is available online in the Mega Sword College, uh, the link is on your screens right now. Uh, it's for every Christian, regardless of which ministry you're from. We're teaching great detail in that series on righteousness, which I cannot teach in this service. In great detail. And this scripture is also very clear that if you don't know righteousness, you are a babe in Christ. So you see, Paul is making it clear. The breastplate of righteousness. How much do you know about righteousness? Hallelujah. Let's just go to, read for us from the Bible, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. See, in the evil day, 
You see, in the evil day, <laughs> Hebrews 5 verse 13 says, Paul, Paul says here, for everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will in purpose, thought, and action. For he is a mere infant, not able to talk yet. So Paul's making on. You need to understand righteousness, the doctrine of righteousness. How many Christians know what righteousness is? See, you've got the gift of righteousness, the life of God. <laughs> How, um, if you don't know righteousness, you are a babe. Spiritual. You can be eight years old, but if you don't realize you are a babe in Christ. You see? And when the evil danger comes, hallelujah, you need to be able to, for you to stand. How much do you know about the doctrine of righteousness? The correct teaching of the doctrine of righteousness. <laughs> Just see how the message of paraphrase Hebrews 5 verse 13. You love it. It will bring the point home. Milk is for beginners. Inexperienced in God's ways. <laughs> so when you know the doctrine of righteousness, you will understand God's ways. See, righteousness reveals the nature of God, how God operates. How does God operate? He revealed us in his word, yes. But righteousness, so that's your nature. You are born again. Righteousness is your nature. The good kind of life is yours. So how are you responding? You know, when a dog, a dog gives, back, gives birth to a dog, and the dog and the puppy will behave like a dog from the very moment the puppy is born. It is the nature of a dog. <laughs> As the puppy grows, give it a bone, it even refuses to share its bone because it's a dog. Now you are born again, you are in Christ. You got the nature of Christ from the very time you got born again. The life of God is in you. The very nature is in you. So what does God say in his word about righteousness? Your nature. Get to know yourself. What God reveals to you, righteousness, your nature. Hallelujah. Very important. So in the evil day, know your nature. Your nature is the breastplate of righteousness. It will protect you. Knowing your nature will protect you. Knowing that your nature, you have the life of God in you. You cannot be destroyed. You cannot perish. You can lose. Your head. You say, they say you're going to die. You say, I refuse to die. I, do, I will not go through premature death. It's an impossibility. I have the life of God in me. Can even go sing good songs. I have the life of God in me. I have the life of God in me. <laughs> Save us songs, wonderful. See, feed yourself with the right side that yes, you know. In the evil day, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have it as your consciousness. Let's continue. Um, let's go to, to Ephesians chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 15 in the Amplified. Ephesians 6, verse 15. Victory belongs to you. Know your nature. <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 15. It's written, and having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Paul says, hang on, you successes, having showed your feet in preparation for to, in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, we face the danger, we face the challenge. Hallelujah. The bigger they come, the bigger they fall. The bigger they come, the bigger is your testimony. Hallelujah. There's one says, in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Now, God understands the good news produced by the, sorry, with the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Now, to understand this fully, the Greek word translated peace in Ephesians 615 is Irene, E-I-R-E-N-E. -E -E. Irene, hallelujah. Irene, hallelujah. It's a good name, hallelujah. So Irene says, basically it goes uh, very briefly. Irene means you have the, you open from a place of rest, all right? It means you open from a place of rest. See, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a gospel of peace. So the more you know it, the more you know it altogether. So in that challenge, you're facing danger, right? You open from a place of rest. That means no panic. 
That means no fear. All right? And in that place, you know, in that place, the gospel of peace, all right, of Jesus Christ, you, 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 you have a quietness in your spirit. You are calm. You are not shaken. You remain calm. You are panic proof. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ makes you panic proof. It makes you fear proof. Hallelujah. So you are calm. You have Irene peace. The gospel of peace. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings you a peace that surpasses all understanding. <laughs> a peace that brings oneness. A peace that brings what? Oneness. So you can have many people facing the same danger, but they've got the oneness of the Spirit, of the, brought about by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You could be a family facing serious danger, but you have a oneness, a peace. You open up a place of rest. There's no fear. There's no panic. There's no anxiety. Why? In the evil day, no anxiety. You operate from a place of peace. The gospel of Jesus Christ brings peace to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, as you continue, uh, verse 16, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Paul says, lift up over, well, over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. <laughs> Paul says, hang on, in that evil day, lift up over all, lift up what? All the covering shield of saving faith. You see? There's a faith in God. <laughs> There's a shield of saving faith. Your faith in God is saving faith. Your faith in God takes you out of the danger. Your faith in God will take you from an impossible situation. You'll be able to come out. There's a way for you. There's a way for you. Shield of saving faith. Libroshka satana basket. Which you can, with which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. See, the shield of faith, saving faith. The Bible makes it clear, Romans 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You so grow your faith from hearing the word of God. That hang on, you are, when you're facing danger, you raise what? The shield of faith, saving faith, upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles. Not some, all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. It doesn't matter what Satan brings in your path. It doesn't matter what danger you face. Hallelujah. There is saving faith in God. Hallelujah. Your faith in God. You say, I will stand. You'll be able to quench. Now to quench means you neutralize. To quench means you remove the power. <laughs> you know, when they, when they launch ballist, uh, 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 when they launch missiles, you know, these days they get, they've got missiles that can go 2,000 kilometers, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, even further. They're making missiles which go further and further to hit targets, all right? But guess what? It doesn't matter the origin of the missile. You are able to quench it. You are able to neutralize it. You are able to take out power. You are able to make it of none effect. Why? Because you've raised the shield of saving faith. See, a shield, whatever is thrown at you, a shield is able to hold off. When, they used to, when you fight with shields, the shield is able to protect you. So, Paul says, hang on, you guys, if you can say, above all, lift up the shield of saving faith. Your faith in God, with which you are able to quench, neutralize, make of none effect every attack of Satan. Every missile of Satan you can neutralize. No wonder the Bible makes it clear that no weapons fashioned against you can prosper. None whatsoever. <laughs> Is it your consciousness? Hallelujah. In the day of danger, raise up a shield of faith. Let's read Hebrews 11. Verse 1 from the Amplified. A few of. <laughs> hallelujah. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation. This is the best definition of faith you can ever find. The one in the Bible. He was literally verse 1. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see. And the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Can you see that? Now faith is the assurance. The assurance. The confirmation. The title deed of the things we hope for. 
In the day of danger, when you face evil, what is it you are hoping for? Are you hoping for success? Are you hoping for a victory? Or you are preparing for a funeral? Or you are preparing for, for failure? What are you hoping for? In that challenge, what are you hoping for? The things you hope for. The, it is the, faith is the proof of the things we do not see. And the conviction of the reality. Faith perceiving as real fact, what is not revealed to the senses. So what do you see? Where is your faith? Faith in God. Again, in the Christian program, you need to go through it. There's a deep teaching on faith. It is awesome. You need to have it. <laughs> you need to go through it. It'll take it to another level. Because Paul is making clear, going back to Ephesians 6, verse, uh, verse 16. It says, above all, you lift up the shield of faith with which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The Amplified Bible says, all the missiles. Because <laughs> if you say darts, people might think there's darts, no, there's more darts. No, the Amplified, I like it, this is all the flaming missiles. Flaming missiles, they come with fire. They want to burn, they want to kill, they want to destroy, they want to destroy you. But guess what? You're able to quench all of them with the shield of faith. Not some of them. Facing danger, you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. You know, some people say, okay, you know, return to sender. You know, those prayers, return to sender. Return to sender. <laughs> what is dangerous? You want to return to sender. Function and love. You don't need to worry about that. You just quench them with the shield of faith. You quench with the shield of faith. How? Let's continue. Verse, Ephesians 6, verse 17. It says, And take the helmet of salvation and the spirit for that the spirit wills, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword that the spirit wills, which is the word of God. Brothers and sisters, we'll pick it up from this verse next week Sunday and conclude it in a way of the spirit that is going to take you to another level. I don't want to go for that. It will, it will take you, it will catapult you to another level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss it at all. You don't want to miss it at all. It will be, it will be a climax. We'll pick it up from there and a few extra things. About it. it will be a Glorious climax. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. You don't want to miss it. Remember, victory belongs to you. You are able to quench all the flaming missiles. All of them. <laughs> all of them. And make them of that effect. You. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, the gospel empowers you to deal with every... God Jesus Christ empowers you to deal with every situation. Well... You have listened to us me preaching and teaching today. If you don't know Jesus is the Lord and Savior, you won't be able to quench all the flaming missiles of Satan and his demons. You want to be born again right now. You, you repeat these words after me so you can confess Jesus is the Lord and Savior. That's the Bible way, the correct way, the only way for you to be able to be born again. Repeat these words after me. Say from today, Jesus is the Lord the boss of my life. He died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected. He ascended to heaven, but lives in me by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words, my brother and sister, you are born again congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. I'd encourage you to get in touch with us through the contact details that are on your screens right now. We'd love to know you that you've been born again. We'd love to send you some, some uh, information that will help you to grow in your faith. Hallelujah. Uh, and uh, we would encourage you to get in touch with us. It's very, very important. And um, at this time, as well, I want to pray for, for a group of people uh, that the group we want to pray. Well, before I do that, uh, something I want to do is uh, just remind you, Jesus commanded us to always bring an offering. Every time we're in service like now, the word of God commands us to bring an offering. The word commands us to give sacrificial seed offering, commands us to give tithes. The word of God tells us, so I would encourage you right now on your screens, you're going to see our church banking details and, uh, and you can 
If you're in, if you live in South Africa, you can easily do a direct transfer in those bank accounts, and even also from outside the world as well, you can do as well. Uh, we also have a secure online platform. The link is on your screens right now as well, where you can partner with us financially from any part of the world. Hallelujah. And including South Africa, where we are as well. God is faithful. Thank you so much for partnering with us financially. You are sowing and on fertile ground, and you indeed reap bountifully. Hallelujah. It's your season to shine. It's your season to advance. You're making more progress than ever before. Hallelujah. God is faithful. You're getting the answers that you need, the strategies that you need. Hallelujah. So I would encourage you, go ahead and do it. That's God's word commands us to do so. I would also encourage you to join us every Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 6.30 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. for 10 minutes, Balls of Wisdom, uh, with Pastor Andrew Mutondoro, myself, and Pastor Bernadette Drovers as well. You'll be mightily blessed. And in fact, today, uh, 6.30 to 6.40 p.m., Pastor Bernadette will be teaching us in the Balls of Wisdom, you know, GMT at 6.30 p.m., 6.40 p.m., GMT plus 2, the John South Africa time, you'll be mighty, mighty blessed. Don't miss it. Hallelujah. And uh, join us on Wednesday for midweek service. You'll be mighty, mighty blessed. And uh, it's from 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. That is GMT plus 2. We join the South Africa time. And it'll be part two of a riveting series entitled um, Unity for Great Impact. Hallelujah. Unity for great impact. And as well, this coming Friday uh, from uh, 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., we've got a Game Changers program, hallelujah, Game Changers program that will be dealing with the peer pressure as well. We're having a special guest to talk, special guest on the program dealing with goal setting and planning. And that special guest is, is a wonderful, uh, humble, mighty man of God, you know, a true son of this, of this ministry as well, that in the form of Pastor Dr. Eddie Mahembe, you will be mighty blessed. It will be it's a riveting session for Game Changers on, on goal setting and planning. Even your adults watch it, I assure you, you will be mightily, mightily blessed. Hallelujah. Now, at this moment in time, I want to say thank you for joining us in the service. I'm going to pray. It's going to pray. I'm going to pray that God send touches you mightily. And I encourage you, don't miss next week's Sunday service. It's very critical. Hallelujah. It's very, very, very critical. You'll be so mightily blessed in that service as um, we'll, be, we'll be doing some things in that service that will mightily bless things of the Spirit led by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We always do things led by the Holy Ghost, but it's a very special way to conclude this series facing danger. Remember, victory belongs to you. Well, this is the last Sunday in the month of September. I want you to know that victory, the Spirit of the Lord says, victory belongs to you. It doesn't matter what you are facing. Victory belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Recovery is taking place right now. Whatever the enemy taken away from you, recovery is taking place right now. There's a turnaround that's taking place in your life right now. There's, uh, there's boundless favor being released in your life right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're going to see that as you go into this week and as you go into this month, many that had lost employment, they are getting their jobs. Many are getting their jobs back. Many are, getting, are creating jobs. It's a ten, there's a serious shift turnaround taking place. Libroshko, Soto, Deboshka. Sitting around taking place in your life. Libroshka, Sati, Deboshko, Soto, Deboshka, I see promotion taking place. I see some people who, your life has been stagnant for a long time. Your life has been stagnant for a long time. You've been at the same level so for too long. The Lord wants you to know, protection, promotion is taking place right now. Supernatural promotion is taking place right now. You're going to find that you have uncommon wisdom. You're going to find that you have the tongue of the learned. You're going to find that you are sought out wherever you are. You know, uh, I see somebody You've been working in your company for over 20 years and you're not a graduate. And for many years, people have been brought to the company and they've been promoted ahead of you, okay? And uh, you have remained stagnant. But you have been faithful. The Lord is saying, promotion comes from me. Right now, that vacancy in your company, which has always been filled by other people from outside the company or from other departments, right now the Lord is saying, promotion is coming to you right now. You are being lifted right now. And under you are going to be people that are more qualified than you. But you are going to shine. God says, be humble. Be humble. Be humble. 
de Bosco Soto, de Bosco Sati, de Bosco Soto. I see a lady with a goiter, a lady with a goiter growth in the neck right now. Just put your hand on that goiter right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command that goiter to go, disappear now. In Jesus' name. Now. In Jesus' name. I see several people, you've got wounds that are not healing. Some of you went for operations and the operational wound is not healing. Some of you are injured, there's just no healing on the wound. Wherever that wound is right now, get ready to receive grace right now. Grace, get ready to receive grace right now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command every infirmity, live now. Now. Devil of darkness, live now. Healing is taking place in those wounds right now. Healing is taking place in those wounds right now. Right now. I see some people are watching right now. You have been married and you have been barren for years. No children. The season of barrenness is over. In the name of Jesus, barrenness is over. Fruitfulness is yours. Yes. 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 Fruitfulness is yours. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Wow. Let us share the grace. And don't miss next week's Sunday. It will be so wonderful as we conclude this series, Facing Danger, Part 7. Don't miss this series. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide in us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. And surely, goodness and mercy are our portion all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. God bless you.